In the late 1886, Nikola Tesla met Alfred S. Brown, a Western Union superintendent, and New York attorney Charles F. Peck. The two men were experienced in setting up companies and promoting inventions and patents for financial gain. Based on Tesla's new ideas for electrical equipment, including a thermomagnetic motor, they agreed to back the inventor financially and handle his patents. Together they formed the Tesla Electric Company in April 1887. They set up a laboratory for Tesla at 89 Liberty Street in Manhattan where he worked on improving and developing new types of electric motors, generators, and other devices. In 1887, Tesla developed an induction motor that ran on alternating current. A power system format that was rapidly expanding in Europe and the United States because of its advantages in long-distance high-voltage transmission. The motor used polyphase current which generated a rotating magnetic field to turn the motor. This innovative electric motor was a simple self-starting design that did not need a commutator. Thus avoiding sparking and the high maintenance of constantly servicing and replacing mechanical brushes. Along with getting the motor patented, Peck and Brown arranged to get the motor publicized. Electrical World magazine arranged for Nikola Tesla to demonstrate his induction motor on the 16th of May, 1888, at the American Institute of Electrical Engineers. Engineers working for George Westinghouse reported to him that Tesla had a viable alternative current motor and related power system. Something Westinghouse needed for the alternating current system he was already marketing. Westinghouse looked into getting a similar patent developed in 1885 by Italian physicist Galileo Ferraris but decided that Nicola's patent would probably control the market. In July 1888, Brown and Peck negotiated a licensing deal with George Westinghouse for Tesla's polyphase induction motor and transformer designs for $60,000 in cash and stock, and a royalty of 2.5 per ack horsepower produced by each motor. Westinghouse also hired Nikola for one year for the large fee of $2,000 per month to be a consultant at the Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company's Pittsburgh Labs. During that year, Tesla worked in Pittsburgh helping to create an alternating current system to power the city's streetcars. He found it a frustrating period because of conflicts with the other engineers over how best to implement a sea power. Soon they found that it would not work for streetcars, since the induction motor could run only at a constant speed. They ended up using a DC traction motor instead. Nikola's demonstration of his induction motor and Westinghouse's licensing of the patent came at the time of extreme competition between electric companies. The three big firms, Westinghouse, Edson, and Thomson Houston, were trying to grow in a capital-intensive business while financially undercutting each other. There was even a war of current propaganda campaign going on with Edison Electric trying to claim their direct current system was better and safer than Westinghouse alternating current system. Competing in this market meant Westinghouse would not have the cash or engineering resources to develop Tesla's motor and the related polyphage system right away. Two years after signing the Tesla contract Westinghouse Electric was in trouble. The near collapse at Barings Bank in London triggered the financial panic of 1890, causing investors to call in their loans to WE. The sudden cash shortage forced the company to refinance its debts. The new lenders demanded that Westinghouse cut back on what looked like excessive spending on acquisition of other companies, research and patents, including the Permotor royalty and the Tesla contract. At that point, Nikola Tesla's induction motor had been unsuccessful and was stuck in development. In early 1891, George Westinghouse explained his financial difficulties to Nikola in stark terms. Saying that, if he did not meet the demands of his lenders, 
he would no longer be in control of West Think House Electric and he would have to deal with the bankers to try to collect future royalties. The advantages of having West Think House continue to champion the motor probably seemed obvious to Tesla and he agreed to release the company from the royalty payment clause in the contract. Six years later Westinghouse would purchase Tesla's patent for a payment of $216,000, as part of a patent sharing agreement signed with General Electric. A company created from the merger of Edison and Thomson Houston. The money Tesla made from licensing his AC patent made him independently wealthy and gave him the time and funds to pursue his own interests. In 1889, Nikola moved out of the Liberty Street shop Peck and Brown had rented and for the next dozen years, he would work out of a series of workshop slash laboratory spaces in Manhattan. Nikola Tesla and his hired staff would conduct some of his most significant work in these workshops. In the summer of 1889, Nicola travelled to the 1889 Exposition Universelle in Paris and learned of Heinrich Hertz and his experiments that proved the existence of electromagnetic radiation, including radio waves. Tesla found this new discovery refreshing and decided to explore it more fully. In repeating and then expanding on these experiments, Tesla tried powering a Runcoff coil with a high-speed alternator he had been developing as part of an improved dark lighting system, but found that the high-frequency current overheated the iron core and melted the insulation between the primary and secondary windings in the coil. To fix this problem he came up with his Tesla coil with an air gap instead of insulating material and an iron core that could be moved to different positions. After 1890, Tesla experimented with transmitting power by inductive and capacitive coupling using high AC voltages generated with his Tesla coil. He attempted to develop a wireless lighting system based on near-field inductive and capacitive coupling. Tesla conducted a series of public demonstrations where he lit guys the tubes and even incandescent light bulbs from across a stage. He would spend most of the decade working on variations of this new form of lighting with the help of various investors. In 1893 at the National Electric Light Association, Nikola Tesla told the onlookers that he was sure a system like his could eventually conduct power to any distance without the use of wires by conducting it through the earth. At the beginning of 1893, West Inkhouse Electric asked Tesla to participate in the World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago where the company had a large space in a building devoted to electrical exhibits. West Inkhouse Electric won the bid to light the exposition with alternating current and it was a key event in the history of AC power as the company demonstrated to the American public the safety, reliability and efficiency of a fully integrated alternating current system. Nikola showed a series of electrical effects related to alternating current as well as his wireless lighting system, using a demonstration he had previously performed throughout America and Europe. Nikola Tesla also explained the principles of the rotating magnetic field in an induction motor by demonstrating how to make a copper egg stand on end, using a device that he constructed known as the Egg of Columbus. In 1893, Edward Dean Adams, who headed up the Niagara Falls Cataract Construction Company, sought Tesla's opinion on what system would be best to transmit power generated at the falls. Over several years, there had been a series of proposals and open competitions on how best to use power generated by the falls. Among the systems proposed by several US and European companies were, two-phase and three-phase AC, high-voltage DC power and compressed air. Nikola advised Adams that a two-phased system would be the most reliable. The company awarded a contract to West Inkhouse Electric for building a two-phase AC generating system at the Niagara Falls. At the same time, a further contract was awarded to General Electric to build the AC distribution system. Impressed with Tesla, 
Edward Dean Adams agreed to help found the Nikola Tesla Company, set up to fund, develop, and market a variety of previous patents and inventions as well as new ones. The company would handle his patents for decades to come. In the early morning hours of March 13, 1895, the South Fifth Avenue building that housed Tesla's lab caught fire. It started in the basement of the building and was so intense, the fourth floor lab burned and collapsed into the second floor. The fire not only set back his ongoing projects, it destroyed a collection of early notes and research material, models and demonstration pieces. When interviewed about the event, Nicola told the New York Times, I am in too much grief to talk, what can I say? After the fire Nikola Tesla moved to 46 and 48 East Houston Street and rebuilt his lab. Starting in 1894, Nikola Tesla began investigating what he referred to as radiant energy of invisible kinds, after he had noticed damaged film in his laboratory in previous experiments, later identified as X-rays. In March 1896, after hearing of Wilhelm Röntgen's discovery of X-ray and X-ray imaging, Tesla proceeded to do his own experiments in X-ray imaging, developing a high-energy single-terminal vacuum tube of his own design that had no target electrode and that worked from the output of the Tesla coil. In his research, he devised several experimental setups to produce X-rays. In 1898, at Madison Square Garden Tesla demonstrated to the public during an electrical exhibition, a boat that used radio control, which he dubbed Teleautomaton. The crowd that witnessed the demonstration made outrageous claims about the workings of the boat, such as magic, telepathy, and being piloted by a trained monkey hidden inside. He tried to sell his idea to the US military as a type of radio-controlled torpedo, but they showed little interest. Remote radio control remained a novelty until World War I and afterward, when a number of countries used it in military programs. By the mid-1890s, Tesla was working on experiments to test his idea about conducting electricity through the Earth and the atmosphere, including setting up large resonance transformer magnifying transmitter in his East Houston Street lab. He proposed a system composed of balloons suspending, transmitting and receiving electrodes in the air above 9,100 meters in altitude, where he thought the lower pressure would allow him to send high voltages long distances. To further study the conductive nature of low pressure air, he set up an experimental station at high altitude in Colorado Springs during 1899. There Nikola could safely operate much larger coils than in the cramped confines of his New York lab, and an associate had made an arrangement for the El Paso Power Company to supply alternating current free of charge. To fund his experiments he convinced John Jacob Astor IV to invest $100,000 to become a majority shareholder in the Nikola Tesla company. Astor thought he was primarily investing in the new wireless lighting system. Instead, Tesla used the money to fund his Colorado Springs experiments. Nikola Tesla made the rounds in New York trying to find investors for what he thought would be a viable system of wireless transmission. In March 1901, he obtained $150,000 from J.P. Morgan in return for a 50% share of any generated wireless patents and began planning the Wardenclyffe Tower facility to be built in New York. Tesla had expanded his plans to build a more powerful transmitter to leap ahead of Marconi's radio-based system, which he thought was a copy of his own system. He approached Morgan to ask for more money to build the larger system, but Morgan refused to supply any further funds. In December 1901, Marconi successfully transmitted the letter S from England to Newfoundland, defeating Nicola in the race to be first to complete such a transmission. 
Investors on Wall Street were putting their money into Markini's system and some in the press began turning against his project, claiming it was a hoax. The project came to a halt in 1905, and in 1906, the financial problems and other events may have led to Nikola's second nervous breakdown. Tesla mortgaged the Warden Cliff property to cover his debts, he lost the property in foreclosure in 1915, and in 1917 the tower was demolished. After Warden Cliff closed, Nikola Tesla opened offices at 165 Broadway in Manhattan, trying to raise further funds by developing and marketing his patents. He went on to have other offices, but he was effectively bankrupt. Most of his patents had run out and he was having trouble with the new inventions he was trying to develop. On his 50th birthday, in 1906, Tesla demonstrated a 150 kilowatt 16,000 RPM bladeless turbine. He worked with several companies trying to perfect the Tesla turbine but engineering difficulties meant it was never made into a practical device. Tesla did license the idea to a precision instrument company and it found use in the form of car speedometers and other instruments. In 1928, he received U.S. patent for a biplane capable of taking off vertically, VTOL aircraft, and then of being gradually tilted through manipulation of the elevator devices in flight until it was flying like a conventional plane. The aircraft has been described as impractical. This would be his last patent, and at this time Nikola Tesla closed his last office. Kenneth Svazwai, a young writer who had been associated with Nikola Tesla for some time, organized a celebration for the inventor's 75th birthday in 1931. Tesla received congratulatory letters from more than 70 pioneers in science and engineering, including Albert Einstein, and he was also featured on the cover of Time magazine. The cover caption, All the World is His Powerhouse noted his contribution to electrical power generation. The party went so well that Nikola made it an annual event, an occasion where he would put out a large spread of food and drink and invite the press to see his new inventions and hear about new theoretical experiments he thought of. In the fall of 1937, one night, while crossing a street a couple of blocks from the Hotel New Yorker, Tesla was unable to dodge a moving taxicab and was thrown to the ground. His back was severely wrenched and three of his ribs were broken in the accident. The full extent of his injuries were never known, he refused to consult a doctor and never fully recovered. On the 7th of January 1943, at the age of 86, Nikola Tesla died alone in his room. His body was later found by his maid after she had entered Tesla's room, ignoring that do not disturb sign that he had placed on his door two days earlier. Assistant medical examiner H. W. Wembley examined the body and ruled that the cause of death had been coronary thrombosis. Following the pressure from Nikola Tesla's nephew Sava Kozanovich, Tesla's entire estate was shipped to Belgrade in 1952. His ashes were also transported from the United States to Belgrade. The ashes are displayed in a gold-plated sphere, on a marble pedestal in the Nikola Tesla Museum. <laughs>